You're watching Ride Like a Local with Belt Drive Betty. Ride Like a Local is brought to you in part by Community Futures, Grand Prairie and Region. I'm at a gathering of the Iron Order MC, being joined right now by a gentleman named Duke, who happens to be the chapter president for the Snow City crew here in Edmonton. You could tell us a little bit about the Snow City crew, how you guys came to be, and how come you're members of the Iron Order MC. It all happened last year. Um, a bunch of us uh, got together and you know what, we uh, uh, wanted the brotherhood. Uh, we wanted to uh, get out there and ride. Um, so we, you know, looked into the Iron Order. Uh, Cheesy started talking uh, with a few guys as well, and um, a lot of research. Uh, that was a that was a big thing. A lot of research, uh, getting to know the club uh, as well, the history of the club as well, um, and kind of things just kind of went from there. To be honest with you, how do you explain to someone who's thinking about becoming a member, what it means to truly be a brother. Truly means to be a brother. Um, you're always there for them. You stand up with them, stand up for what you feel is right. Honesty. When we, we went down to uh, our national party, I'm, this was the second year that we went, nobody in Canada really knows about the I.O. Mm -hmm. um, so when we went down to our national rally, it, it was just a different culture down there. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, the businesses, open arms. Um, you know, the liquor stores, the hotels, the McDonald's even on, on the street had welcome Iron Order Motorcycle Club. You don't get that here. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody in, in Canada and in in Edmonton uh, think that a three-piece patch means bad things, you know. Um, that you're doing stuff to to make the money sort of thing right and we're not all about that it's it's mm -hmm. that's not what we do we have a lot of naysayers out there like you said that think that a three-piece patch means you're up to no good bottom line that's what people assume they don't understand why you would want a prospecting phase the truth of the matter is is that a prospecting phase is about making sure that person holds the same moral values you do. That's correct. The, the prospecting, you know, we first we have the hang around stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, come hang around with the club, get to meet a few brothers, go for a few rides and stuff. And then the prospecting, prospecting stage, um, our prospect here this weekend, he's working his ass off to keep everybody happy. It's just not us, it's, it's you know, our maidens and it's our guests. and. We just want to get to know him. We want to get to know him. We want to get him to know his family. If he has any kids, bring the kids around. Almost everybody and his dog seems to have a clubhouse these days, but you guys don't. Why is that? Um, if you have the clubhouse, everybody's just going to ride to the clubhouse and hang out. You're not going to ride. And this is a motorcycle club. You're supposed to be out there riding when it was... Up next will be another brother of the Iron Order MC. I'm being joined right now by an international nomad for the Iron Order MC named Clink. Clink, tell me what you're doing up here all the way from Kentucky. I'm visiting with my brothers up here in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, we're here, uh, they're having a northern national get together and that's why I'm here. 3,500 miles, you've come up here just to spend a weekend getting to know your brothers here in the Edmonton chapter. What have you learned about this crew? Uh, these are some good guys. Uh, they have a, a lot of positive things going on. Uh, they're a fairly new chapter. They've been here a little over a year, but uh, they understand the vision that the Iron Order Motorcycle Club has. Okay, and uh, I try to surround myself with uh, honorable men, and these guys are honorable men. And I want to come up here and give them any guidance that they may need, any information they may need, uh, just to show a little support from the United States. Can you just clarify for my audience, kind of fill them in a little bit about the vision and the mission of the I.O.? The, the vision of it is, is to give an alternative 
uh, to uh, motorcycle enthusiasts, basically. Uh, we are a full-fledged uh, full three-piece patch MC, okay? Um, we, um, we accept all walks of life. We accept uh, all color of skin. We don't care what your color of skin is. We care what's in your heart, okay? Uh, 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 brotherhood is what we, what we represent. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys in our club are military. A lot of guys have joined unions and things of that nature. And they're, they're looking for a brotherhood type situation. And, um, you know, we, we fill a niche. Yeah. There's, what, 300 chapters worldwide? Uh, a little over 300 chapters worldwide. Yes, ma'am. And how come... A brotherhood why is that term so important to you gentlemen well you know what it is is um, you know a lot of us have families okay we don't pick and choose our biological family I can't pick and choose my biological brother I can't pick and choose my biological sister but I can pick and choose my brothers okay and uh, you know uh, a lot of us are looking uh, for you know a connection uh, you know a um, uh, a bond between men, okay? Everybody needs to belong to something. You know, the, the biggest thing in the world uh, for people is to be accepted into something. And, uh, you know, uh, so guys are looking for an organization to belong to that has families, that have careers, that have, uh, you know, kids and things of that nature. And we, op we give that opportunity, okay, to the right individuals. Okay. Now, what... What in your in your mind is the right individual? And uh, the the right individual for me is uh, someone. If I'm broke down on the side of the road and and I call someone and uh, I need some help, if if someone can't be there, they're going to send ten people in their place to help me. Okay, that's simple as that. Uh, we've had some incidents where uh, we had a uh, a brother's wife was uh, killed in a motorcycle wreck. Uh, brothers took care of the family. The family came in. They you know we we provided them. You know, clothing, food. We put them up. We did their laundry. We take care of them. We have scholarship programs for our, our brothers' families. You know, we give out. Uh, I think it's five thousand dollars a year. And all of our money goes back to the club. No, nobody in our club earns for the club. All the money that we that we make whatsoever in charity events and stuff like that goes to charities. The dues that we pay in our own club is very small, but that that money goes back into our brotherhood fund as well. You know. So uh, it's all about accepting brothers and taking care of brothers, you know. Uh, if a brother's sick, you know, uh, we try to take care of him. If a brother's hurting, we all hurt. If a brother's hungry, we're going to give him a sandwich, you know. If, uh, if a brother's passing through, uh, you know, I, I open up my home, you know, I break bread with my brother. We have, you know, it, it's like a family, you know. Uh, that's how we get to know each other. Uh, brothers have stayed at my home. I've stayed at other brothers' homes, things of that nature. And, um, you know, it's... Until you're in this type of organization, I can talk to you about it all day long, but you have to experience it for yourself. What is the quality that you look for, the key quality in the man that you choose as a brother? Honor. Honor. Uh, to, 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 to have honor, you got to do honorable things. To have respect, you got to do respectful things. You know, if you're playing golf, and you're playing golf by yourself, and uh, you hit a golf ball behind a tree, uh, if you kick the ball out and don't count it, you just cheated yourself, okay? So to have honor, to be respectful, you know, and have integrity, that's what I look at in a, in a human being. Uh, whether it's a club brother or whether it's a, uh, an employee or uh, a relationship, you know, uh, that's what I look for. To someone that that is truthful, you know, uh, brutal truth. You know, I can deal with all the truth in the world no matter how negative it is. But as but I can't deal with a lie. So uh, someone that can tell me the truth, someone that's honorable, honorable and respectful. Uh, uh, that's what that we look for. Growing communities one idea at a time is Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region, providing business planning, cash flows, market research, and business loans. Visit www.cfofgp.com to see how we can help you. You bought your bike from the brand you trust the most. That's what Dalton Timmis is for your insurance options. As a specialized motorcycle insurance carrier, we can get you the best coverage, customized to fit you at the very best price. Call 1-888-385-8466 or visit daltontimmis.com now to get your free quote. 
You are watching Ride Like a Local with Belt Drive Betty. I'm being joined right now by Cheesy, who, when I met him yesterday, he was the chapter president of the Snow City crew. He's been made nomad for Canada. I would like you, Cheesy, to explain to my audience what it means to be a, a nomad. Well, thanks. I guess first off, uh, being a nomad to me means that I'm no longer serving the chapter, I'm now serving the club. It's a huge honor for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's something that uh, I never expected would happen. I'm dedicated to this club very much. What do you foresee happening for yourself and, and this club over the course of the next, say, two years under your guidance? Well, that's a fair question. I'd be doing more traveling uh, at my own expense to uh, visit the various chapters in Canada. And uh, with the responsibilities I see under my watch in, let's say, the next uh, 12 to 24 months, uh, I really see that the uh, uh, want to see the growth and uh, chapter expansion within Canada. Uh, you know, we have uh, five chapters right now in Canada, and I'd like to, quite frankly, see that uh, see that even double. Um, tell me what it's meant to you to find an emotional home. For years. Um, uh, when I was younger and I was involved with uh, bike clubs and things like that, uh, uh, I always had a, uh, and since then I should say that I've always had a tough time finding uh, a home, if you will. I've tried golf, I've tried tennis, I've tried bowling, I'm too fat to do most of those, and uh, <laughs> I've always found myself at home on a motorcycle. Um, you know, really for me, uh, this is a, this is like coming home. Uh, this is a club that really truly does practice brotherhood. It's like fitting a glove. Now, the club life is not for everybody. There are sacrifices. The nice thing with the Iron Order is, uh, you know, very simply we have family first, work second, uh, faith third, and uh, and then the uh, club. But what you find is over time, as you uh, as you develop more and more club activity, and the longer you've been in, you'll find that. Uh, uh, in fact, that balance starts to shift and the club really does become your family, which is your number one priority. Having said that, we don't have any mandatory events. There's nothing that somebody has to do if you've got to work or you've got family commitments, your daughter's ballet class. We don't expect to see you on a run. And uh, that's what allows us the flexibility to still operate as a traditional MC, but, value, but maintain the value that's so important to, I think, uh, all Canadians. Explain to my audience what you deem a brotherhood to be. Brotherhood to me is somebody that's prepared to uh, be there when you need them. Uh, there's an old saying that it's easy to be a brother in the good times. It's in the bad times that it really matters. And it doesn't matter if somebody's moving, if somebody's emotionally down, uh, if somebody uh, has some sort of problem, um, social, economic, or family, or personal. Uh, the Brotherhood's always there. Um, since we've had this chapter here in Edmonton, we've had some high times and some low times. We've had a, um, a full dress funeral, uh, and uh, we've also um, uh, celebrated with a wedding uh, approximately a month ago where we had a maiden and a brother get married. So and that was a fantastic time. And, and that really shows the Brotherhood. We had one week to get together a wedding, and we actually pulled it together. And um, the community at large, uh, some of the people that we've come to know in the businesses, uh, were very excited to help and, 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 and help us put this together. Well, a lot of ladies that I know really bark about the uh, MCs and the fact that they don't allow women to sport a patch. Now, you guys have done something with your ladies in that they are the Iron Maidens and that they are very much a part of your club, although they don't vote, they don't do certain things, and they don't wear a patch. They all have support gear that they wear, and a lot of them ride their own bikes and are on the runs with you guys. Why have you chosen that particular route? Well, I guess, uh, first off, happy wife, happy life, that we value our wives and our significant others. They're important parts of our lives. They're mothers, they're aunts, they're daughters, and uh, quite frankly, they're our partners, and they're very important in our lives, and we want to recognize them as such. At the end of the day, this is a men's motorcycle club, but we want to value and recognize our significant others, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a form of sisterhood, and quite frankly, down in the States, uh, some of the Iron Order Maidens uh, are quite a quite a bike club unto themselves. The prospecting phase gives you that opportunity to learn 
about that individual, doing your due diligence and understanding that person's mindset and reason why they want to be a part of a, a brotherhood is a very big thing. Uh, too many people want to wear a patch and not really understand what it means and what they're wearing. So during our prospecting period, uh, we're, we're tough on our prospects in terms of understanding the history of our club, uh, being prepared to uh, service the club or chapter, and, uh, and understand their philosophies and values so that we can uh, determine and properly vet them to make sure that they are going to be good quality uh, brothers as they go through the uh, program. We talked earlier about trying to put a triangle through a square. Uh, shape and it just doesn't work. You can try it a million different ways and it won't work. And uh, although it can be tough to uh, know a man for uh, three to six months or a year, and uh, at the end of that term, uh, tell him he's not a he's not right fit for us. Uh, ultimately, it's the right move for the brotherhood, and it's a natural vetting process that any company, any club worth their salt has to go through. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, uh, without getting into too much detail due to a club protocol, we've had several individuals that have not made our prospecting process. And, uh, and when I talk about prospecting process, I'm not talking about hazing or uh, uh, embarrassing anybody. We, we really look at them as brothers in waiting. And we work with them and we, we want to develop the history and uh, understand the meaning of the club and really understand why they're wearing the patch and what the patch means. On a, on a closing note, if someone decided that they'd like to explore the Iron Order um, and see what kind of a fit it might be for them, what would the process be? And well, that's a good question. The, the first process is I would encourage everybody to check out the Iron Order uh, website. From there, you can navigate through the different provinces. So as an example, if you were here in Alberta, you could navigate to the uh, Snow City Crew page, uh, Edmonton, uh, you can, you're welcome to leave a comment on the guest book. You're welcome to uh, send an inquiry. If you've been in some serious trouble within the last 10 years involving anything to do with kids, spousal abuse, and, and or drugs, uh, you, you need to push on to somebody else. Uh, falling short of that, if you had a little bit of running with the law as a kid and, and you might have had a little of this and done a little of that, we certainly still want to talk to you. And then we, and, and chances are you'll be talking to myself and, and, uh, and we go through just, uh, you know, who you are, what you're about, why you're interested in the club, uh, what's important to you, and everybody's answer is brotherhood. That's the number one answer. Uh, unfortunately, I can tell you the number one reason most people are interested in the club is they want to put a patch on their back. And uh, for all the people that want to wear a patch on your back, I would just say that uh, save us both a lot of time. For those that are looking forward to make a change uh, as yourself as a man, to change your life and to have a lot of fun in a motorcycle club, reach out to us. We will get in touch with you in a prompt manner. Uh, we'll come and meet you. That's my job. Uh, we will do what we can do to see if you're fit. The Sports Camera Store in West Edmonton Mall is your one-stop shop for drift and GoPro action cameras. We carry Canada's largest selection of action cam accessories, along with video sunglasses, hidden in surveillance cameras, and more. Visit www.sportscamerastore.com or stop in to our West Edmonton Mall location, lower level by the bay. Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region. Business Development Assistance. Business Planning, Cash Flows, Market Research, Business Loans up to $150,000. Community Futures, growing communities one idea at a time. I'm being joined right now by Prospect Darren from the Snow City crew of the Iron Order MC. Darren, I would like you to explain to me the process of becoming a prospect and why you wanted to become a prospect, why this club was the right fit for you. Okay, well the first step is, is meeting the club, um, obviously, you have to you have to get to know them, you become a hang around, and that's where they see if you're a good fit or not, if you fit within their morals, their ethics, their what they're looking for in, in a prospect. Um, next step is somebody sponsors you in as a prospect, and you get your prospect cut, and it goes from there. Um, the reason why I wanted, why I chose to prospect and chose to approach this club is I 
but I miss a brotherhood. I had a brotherhood back in BC. I had a brotherhood at work. I became one of the big bosses and I lost that brotherhood. And for the last three, four years, I've had a void that I just couldn't fill. And being around and hanging around these guys has shown me that they it is a true brotherhood. It really is. I mean, these guys are so, so tight knit as a chapter. These guys actually made sure that you get a break, that you get to go for a ride, that you get to be part of absolutely everything in this club. Tell me what that has meant to you to be treated with such respect, even though you're not a full patch member yet. It's, it's shown me that they actually give, I don't know if I'm allowed to yes, swear. <laughs> it's it, it, it shown me that they give a shit. How do you get to know a man when you're, when you're treating him with disrespect, when you're humiliating him, degrading him? You don't know him as a man. They treat prospects like, like they should be. They're a brother in training. A brother in training, what does that mean to you? To me, it's, um, it's learning. When you say learn, what things are they teaching you about life and about the club life that make you feel so comfortable? My brother before me. That's what it's, that's what it's all about, putting other people before your needs. You know, and that, that a lot of people in this world could learn from that. I, I truly believe that. Being of service to others. Yes. And you're a married man? Yes. Tell me how it has made you feel as a man. It's, you know what, it's actually helped my home life too. I, I take a look at my home life and my club life and I realize that I have been a selfish person at home and it's, it's helped myself and Emma out huge. You know, it's, it's, it's also helped me at work, believe it or not. This has changed my whole life, it really has. It's a whole different outlook. I was the boss, so Technically, I have 60 prospects working for me at work. Now, this whole thing has made me step back and realize how I treat other people and how I expect to be treated back. What is your hope for the future? Where do you, where do you as a prospect today, see yourself in this club, say, two years from now? I'd like to see this club grow with, with, uh, with like-minded individuals, you know, and I'd like to be a part of that growth. I mean, I think we could do some big things here and we could grow this family. When you say do big things, tell me what that means to you. Um, to me, it's just, just the growth. That's what I mean by big things. You know, as, as tight-knit as everybody here is, I mean, it's, it's Alberta. Everybody works hard. They work 12-hour days. They're in the same boat as the rest of us. I mean, you, got, you can't tell me that there isn't other people looking for that to fill that same void that, that for the reason we're sitting here today. You know? When you're out riding your motorcycle with your brothers, what does it feel like? Amazing. Amazing. I've rode alone for I don't know how many years, you know, and, and it's it's incredible. I get goosebumps. A pack like today, I get goosebumps. I'm, you can't see it, I got my bandana up, but I got a shit-eating grin on my face the whole time. Has this club really taught you that much about how to be a man and lay it out on the line and be truthful, forthcoming? It, it has. People the guys don't judge you know people worry people in society worry so much about what other people think here you can be yourself and that and that's how you let go that's how you show your emotions everybody always has to be the stoic tough guy and nothing matters and i don't give a shit about anything but you know what that's what family's for to be that shoulder to lean on to be able to help people out you know i wish there was something like this for everybody you know Everybody needs to find their home and, and what resonates right with them. And the MC life is not for everybody, but for those that it is a part, you know, something that they'd like to explore. As a prospect, what would you tell someone who's thinking about the MC life? Well, the first thing they need to do is, is research. You know, it's like you said, it's not for everybody. With this lifestyle come certain risks and, and expectations and it's, it's a complete different lifestyle change it's not just a, a weekend thing you know it's a lifestyle you have to be willing to commit and to you what does the word commit mean this is this is my life this is it you know and my, my, my better half's involved I, it's what I look forward to every single day this is this is it this is it for me I heard you tell me in a previous discussion that until you found these people, you felt empty. Why did you feel empty? I had nobody that I related to, you know, Emma and I both, 
sorry I keep talking about it. No, you can't that's... see her. She's over there. Yeah. But, but you know, like it's 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 tough to find people you relate to in this world. It really is. And after a few years of that, and just spending time by yourself and being a lone wolf, you know, you just you feel empty. You really do. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely yeah. sucks, doesn't it? If you could wish one thing for anybody that's watching this that feels empty inside, what would you wish for them? That you could feel this fullness. It's amazing. Feel the love, feel the family, feel the brotherhood. It's, it's incredible. I'm being joined right now by Beans, and she is the lead Iron Maiden. She brought the program up here to Edmonton, and she is also married to Nomad Cheesy, who used to be the chapter president here. Tell me, Beans, why the Iron Maidens are an important aspect of the Iron Order Motorcycle Club. The Iron Order Maidens uh, support um, the guys, and basically what we do is we um, help out at all the functions, uh, barbecues, anything like that. And uh, we also ride with uh, the guys and uh, support the club and support them. Now, you guys just experienced a beautiful wedding um, where one of your members, one of the Iron Maidens, uh, who has just had cancer surgery, and uh, one of the brothers decided that they wanted to tie the knot and make it official. And in a very short space of time, you guys put on an absolutely amazing wedding party for them. That kind of support, um, is that something typical within the club? Oh, absolutely. We, um, uh, one of our maidens found out she had breast cancer in both breasts and she was gonna have a double uh, mastectomy. And we basically had a week to put this wedding on. She wanted to get married. Uh, so we did, we just all joined together. We um, went out to one of the brother's houses uh, and we put up a tent, we made all the food. Uh, one of the maidens made a beautiful wedding cake. It was fabulous. And she was, both of them were just so excited that we did that for them. I've been talking to some of the different men in the club and they talk about the brotherhood and how it's made them better husbands, better fathers. From a wife's perspective, is what they're telling me really true? Absolutely. I believe my husband has become a better father. He's become a better husband and he just loves the club. He loves all the guys in it. Um, he's never had his own brother in his, you know, growing up. And now he's just, he just loves, loves all the guys. And it's amazing. It's amazing how they, they just all get along and they, you know, they do, they'll do anything for each other. And we found that with the, the maidens. You know, I grew up never having a sister and now I have all these sisters that I can phone up anytime and say, oh, I'm just having a bad day and they are there for me and we, we have a great time. When, when you say that it has Im improved your, hus or your husband as a man and a father, what do you mean improve? I think it, he has his family time, he has his work time, and he has his time that he goes out with the club. And I think it's made him realize that in each position that he's in, whether he's at work, he's at home, or he's with the club, the time he's in each of those positions, he really enjoys each one a lot more, and he's, he's just more passionate about each thing that he does. He's what do you love the most about being an Iron Maiden? Um, I love that I've met so many wonderful people and that I just have that sisterhood with, with the girls, and we just, you know, if the guys are out of town doing something, we'll just phone each other up and say, hey, let's get together and go for dinner. Or let's, you know, come on over to my house and we'll hang out. And we just, everybody loves to get together. We all have such a good time. And it's just something I've never had in my life in the past. And I just love it. I just love having all these girls around me and we just have such a good time. Your face beams as you say that. So, Beans, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me and give me the female perspective of what this MC is really all about. Thank you so much.